So here's what the Hainer Seek microphone sounds like when it's all set up and ready to go. As you can tell, the sound quality is really, really good. You can probably hear my dog running around in the background and his uh, dog tags jingling. So right off the bat, you need to know that there are no instructions that come with this kit. I don't know if maybe you go to their website, you'll find instructions. I didn't do that myself because setup, as long as you know what your goal is or what you're trying to do and you know what you bought, setup is pretty easy. So the way that I have this set up right now is I have a USB adapter on my iPad and then I have the microphone plugged into the microphone port on the sound card. And then all I had to do was power up the sound card and hit record on the iPad and it's good to go. That's not the only thing that this kit can do. Um, I, this thing is really set up for somebody uh, to do like entertaining podcasts. It has inputs for external sources of sound or music. Um, so you could do like accompaniment, accompaniment, I don't know. Um, it's uh, got a, a second external like line level monitor output on it. What else does it have here? And then it has an output that you can send through OBS or through some other live streaming platform. So there's a whole bunch of inputs and outputs on here. It also uses Bluetooth, so I can have music on my phone, and if I want background music playing, I can have that music playing through the sound card going into my whatever I'm recording with. So you have lots of options here. Setting up Bluetooth is really easy. I just went to the Bluetooth section on my iPad, and, it, um, and they connected, and then I could play music through my iPad, from my iPad, through the sound card, and then record it back into my iPad while I talk. So it's really quite handy. <clears throat> the sound card also uh, has a whole bunch of different what they call scene modes, and then also has a lots of sound effects. So I'm going to cycle through a bunch of these, and you'll see what they sound like. So this is the original, um, it just says origin, and then this one is called MC. A lot of these are reverb, so there's just going to be different levels of reverb. But here's some creepy ones. Um, here's one that's called... This one's called male. As you can tell, it made me sound even more manly. This one is called female, and... I don't know. It just doesn't sound right. As, as well as this one. This one is called Child, and for some reason, the voice is even deeper than female. This one is fun. It's called Monster. Um, it may be a little bit more difficult to understand, but it's kind of fun. This is called KTV. It's a very deep reverb. This one's called Pop, which is just an even like longer decay on the reverb. This one's called Pro, just another reverb. And then we're back to the original output. <clears throat> on top of that, um, you have buttons to switch between um, your monitor you know, channels. You have your headphone monitor or your external monitor. You can turn your Bluetooth on and off and it'll tell you when it's on or off. Um, and then we have this thing called Electro, okay? So I was playing with Electro. Turns out it is auto-tune, and it will auto-tune your voice in a certain key, and it tells you what key it is every time you press the button, so I'll try to do this now. I don't know if it'll, you'll pick it up. I'll, I'll try to monitor on my uh, iPad here. Yeah, it doesn't, you don't hear it um, say A major, but it adds a whole bunch of reverb, and then it tries to auto-tune your voice in the different key. So that was A major, and I think that was B major, C major. I mean, it's all going to sound the same unless I sing for you, but I'm not going to sing for you. Um, but if you like that, I don't know who does it, the T-Pain style, you know, or whatever, it, it really gives you that effect. All right, let me switch back to just the clean signal here. And then the, um, the last thing uh, that I haven't figured out yet, there's a button here called Dodge. 
or and it's also called interplay and I click the button and it turns on but I don't really I can't really tell a difference and maybe it has to do with one of the inputs um, speaking of the inputs I was hoping first of all I wanted to see how compatible this uh, microphone or this this sound card was with external you know microphones or microphones that didn't come with it and so this is just a Behringer B1 it's a decent condenser microphone um, and I hooked it into the system and I got nothing so um, I think it's just because this requires a lot more power you know this requires like 48 volts of phantom power and uh, I don't think this microphone does and uh, at the same time I also <clears throat> snagged my old my old iRig. I used to use this to hook my guitar into my iPhone and you know record my guitar before iPhones did away with the headphone jack. And I got my guitar right here. Okay, so I uh same thing, you know, I, I hooked the guitar up, made sure the power or the volume was up and everything, and um plugged it all in into the uh, accompany port and nothing it didn't happen and it, again i think it's just because it requires a powered input and i don't think this sound card provides any type of phantom power and it's not going to substitute for a direct box or anything like that so it's just going to be compatible with either passive devices like this uh, microphone that it comes bundled with or with uh devices that provide their own power, like amplified power sources. So like you could hook your phone into here and, um, you know, have it run, you know, have it run through the, through the input port here. And, uh, and then again, the most obvious choice would be to use the Bluetooth if you want to have backing music or anything like that. And that works really well. So I figured what I would do is just do a really quick comparison to um, a different microphone um, that you may be considering while you're looking to buy microphones for podcasting or for doing voiceover work. And that's what I do is the voiceover work. So let's just do a really quick comparison here. This is the Hainerseek uh, microphone with the uh, USB sound card. And this is the Blue Microphones, the Snowball. Okay, they're kind of in the same price range. The Blue Microphone, you only get a microphone with this one you know you get the whole package here and here is the hainer seek once again <clears throat> so there's a couple other functions that i haven't covered on this yet and you know there's a lot to it so it's a lot to cover you have um, volume um, buttons here you can increase or decrease the volume of the microphone of your monitor like what you can hear and i i'm assuming this says rex and I think it meant to say AUX. And that's the one thing about this is it kind of has like these, we'll call them charming uh, misspellings of like every word. And you have to kind of translate what the words mean. But it is what it is. Um, so I think this is the AUX in. Um, you can control the volume of that. And it just helps. It's basically a real, real rudimentary uh, mixer that you can use on this uh, thing. But I forgot to um, also show you all the different uh, sound effects it has. So prepare yourself these are interesting to say the least first of all you have an applause track and then here is one that's called exult which i think is like a gasp of exultation i don't know it sounds like a laugh track to me there's more laugh tracks coming up this one's called fight it's very simple that's it this one's called smirk Prepare yourself. <laughs> I sure hope I don't get any type of copyright strikes for any of these songs. Okay, that was that one. Here's Kiss. This one's called Disco. Uh, this one's called Laugh. 
This one's called Awkward. And then this one's a spring. So, get a nice little soundboard there. I don't know how many of those are actually useful in a podcast setting, but I mean, they're there and they're available. And then obviously, if you have more soundboard, like if you have a soundboard on your iPad or your, your phone, you know, you can either use the auxiliary in or the Bluetooth to uh, feed that directly into your, your microphone feed. So, in conclusion, um, the accessories that come with it, meh, they're okay. You're not, buy- you're not really buying it for the accessories. The build quality of the microphone is really, really good. I think the sound quality is amazing. Um, the, uh, the USB uh, sound card is great it has lots of potential um and i may not have unlocked its full potential yet because there's no instructions that come with it um but all the different effects and things are i think they would be very useful if you were streaming or podcasting and you wanted to add effects and have your you know your little laugh tracks or whatever the case may be um the pattern on this microphone is a super cardoid, so it pretty much picks up everything in front, but I assume that if I turn it around, as you can see, all you can hear is actually the sound bouncing off the wall over there. So it's a very, it's a very directional microphone. Uh, the build quality of the actual microphone and the uh, sound card is great. The sound card runs on a battery, so it does not require any type of power um, to output, and you can it does charge via USB. So I hope that answers any questions you might have about this particular microphone and sound card setup. Now keep in mind, this is not a USB microphone. It does use an XLR connection, so you won't be able to connect the microphone directly to your computer or your iPad or whatever. You do have to use the sound card uh, as an in- intermediary. This is an audio interface. Um, So, kind of limited, but for what it's designed for, it performs exactly the way you should expect. Um, If you're in the market for something like this, for just a little bit more than, like, let's say a snowball mic, you can get this with all the uh, added functionality of the sound card. So, I hope that helped you guys out. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.